Hey, greetings. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today we have a Hoover Bagless Steerable Elite. And they'll probably put a few other names on this and I will update the description as that goes. Now, if you're new to the channel, I am a seasoned vacuum technician who also has a background in manufacturing. So I'm gonna do this review a lot different than the other ones that you're probably going to see. We'll go in the shop, we'll actually take apart the machine, explore the maintenance, and I've had this for about a month and a half, two months. I've been using it around my house. I have a 5,000 square foot house with about half of that carpeted. So we've really been putting it to the test. And um, upon putting it to the test, you know, this machine is not for a large house in its case of use. Its case of use is for a condo or apartment setting or a really small house, something, you know, under 2,000, probably around you know, 1,000 to 1,500 square feet is probably where this machine would shine. And it has a swivel neck, which separates it from the other bagless machines. It also has an exhaust HEPA, which again, separates it from the other bagless machines. All good features. You know, it's got telescoping wand, a crevice tool. It's got a nice soft dusting brush and an upholstery tool. Now there is a pet version of this that comes with a rotating tool. I don't think that would probably be necessary. Generally, if you have pets, you're not gonna spring for a bagless vacuum. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. This machine is a bagless machine, which means it will have more maintenance than its bagged counterparts. And in this price range, you can definitely get a Hoover Tempo uh, bagged version that will cost you less to maintain and be less hassle to maintain. So let's talk about maintenance real quick here. One thing I did like is that the filter is rinsable. One of the filters is rinsable, but it's yellow and it says wrong way, right way. There's no way you're going to miss your filter maintenance. And I found you got about two of these dumps before you needed to rinse that filter. So that's really good. Most, most machines need to be rinsed every use. Now, also on the front of the machine, right here, we have a HEPA. This will need to be changed uh, probably every three to six months on this machine. Again, you don't save any money with bagless. It's just something that you want. The machine has a height adjustment. You have four positions. Um, I ended up having to use it on the second highest position for my carpet. The machine has an on-off switch at your foot and then you just step on the base to release it and then you have your swivel neck. If you're unfamiliar with how to use a carpet height adjustment, let me demonstrate that on this. Get yourself some salt, throw it on the carpet like so, and you'll see you have four adjustments. So let's go through and adjust it. And when it's adjusted right, not only will we hear a sound change, but you also see the salt start to vibrate. So let's start too low and go all the way high. And as you can see right here, the medium pile was appropriate. This doesn't have great carpet agitation, so it doesn't vibrate it's like some of the other vacuums, but it gets the job done. The uh, wand I found a little on the short side. It goes just a little bit above my knee. Um, so you're not really gonna do a lot of stuff with this. But again, the, the intention of this machine and price point, I think that's pretty normal in this sector. They do give you a really long crevice tool that's not normal, and that crevice tool then brings us to just a little bit of over, I'd say, a meter long, which is nice. So if you do need to get in or around certain things, you'll be able to do that with this tool right here. The hose is pretty short. It will follow you around until it hits something. Then if it gets, say, lodged on something like this, then it definitely can fall over. So keep in mind with this, the tools are really secondary and you'll probably have to keep one hand on this. Let's talk real quick about stair cleaning. So the upholstery tool, this pops up and then there's nowhere to store this, unfortunately. Um, the hose does secure. So now we've got that attached and it's kind of in an awkward place on the stairs.
So it will do stair cleaning. It does kind of balance on the stairs, not like this, but like this, it will somewhat balance on the stairs. The wheels are actually pretty far forward on the bottom. The cord length on this machine is short, but it's of average length of vacuums in this segment. When you try to get into low places, um, this piece gets in the way, which protects the HEPA filter, which is good design on it, but only the nozzle is going to fit a few inches under things, and the rest of it, not so much. And then if you try and lay it flat, it is going to cantilever. Again, pretty usual for machines in this segment. Hey, real quick, we're gonna talk about maintenance in the shop. So there's a couple of things I like about this. One, the hose just half turn and you can get it undone. If you need to pull out a blockage, it comes right off. So I really like that. On the bottom, you do have to go through quite a few screws to uh, get to the brush roller. So let's do that real quick. Now they're all the same, they're all fill up screws, which I like. This base plate just pops right off. Now let's see what's inside here. All right, so we have sealed ball bearings in here. The roller does not come apart. We have a rubber stretch belt on here as well. So this rubber stretch belt means that you're going to have to change this on a regular basis, probably about every three to six months. It's pretty enclosed. After use, there's nothing but a little bit of the belt that melted off in here. There's nothing else in this chamber, which is good that there's no dust or debris in there. And it's easy enough to do. And I will put a link below in this video uh, to that belt in this brush roller in case you need. And then if you need to put this back together, you just put all those screws back in. So pretty easy to maintenance. Now, a lot of times you see in my in the shop section that I go into the motor and stuff. This is not meant for you to do that. This is the majority of the maintenance that will be done on this machine. And one thing I was noticing as I was putting this back together, there's hardly any of my wife's hair wrapped around this. This brush roller seems to resist uh, human hair tangles. So that's kind of a cool design. While we're on the bench, I wanna just clarify where the filters are. Rinse this every other use. Let it dry overnight. Do not let it dry in the vacuum. And then there's a HEPA filter down here. And this will need to be changed, like I said, uh, probably about every three to six months. It's typical, and you can see where some of the dust has been caught in this HEPA filter, which should be bright white and will discolor when it needs to be changed. Hey, I wanna talk about why we go outside to dump bagless units. If you're unaware, vacuum dust is fairly hazardous. You don't wanna breathe this. You never wanna empty this inside your house. It's really bad for you. It can cause lung disease. So that's why you wanna go outside, empty it outside always, and it won't be a problem, but just, just keep that in mind. That's why we empty this outside. Large debris pickup is surprisingly good. All right, we're gonna do a carpet pickup test. And if you notice an audible difference, it's because we're using a studio mic. You'll also hear the real sound of the machine as it's running. We have uh, breakfast cereal flour, cat litter, and some fresh pet hair. Let's see how this machine does. <laughs> to address is it moved a piece of animal hair right where the belt lines up thereabouts. A little bit of flour. There's, oh, I can't get it. There's some, so there's, I can feel the cat litter. Maybe, there, yeah, there's a way piece of cat litter in there. And then you can see that there's some pet hair. So not the best performer. However, they don't have this on the Carpet and Rug Institute's approval list. And if 
you need something that performs on soft carpet like this or you need more power, they have other offerings I would highly recommend to you. Uh, I'll put a link at the end of this video to the Hoover uh, Tempo that I recommend, which passed this test with flying colors. Now we're going to do the same test here on hard floor with the breakfast cereal flour, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. There's no way to stop the brush roller on this vacuum, which means the roller will be rotating, which can spin stuff out of the vacuum and ultimately could damage the floors or hurt the vacuum long run. We'll show you how it does. <laughs> Why the stuff is gone where we ran the vacuum over, a lot of it just got relocated behind the vacuum. And again, the way this is designed, that makes a lot of sense. This doesn't have a way of stopping the brush, so the only thing keeping it from spitting stuff out of the vacuum is this really soft brush that drags on the floor here. So it did all right for one that spins but I wouldn't want to use it on a regular basis on hard floor. So if you're new to the channel, we test vacuums and working vacuum, which is a nice combination between practical airflow and sealed vacuum. We'll also test the sealed vacuum when we do this. So that's about 60 sealed, which is a pretty low number. Uh, it's not the lowest. It's definitely higher than something like a Kirby or some of the older designs. It gets about 30 inches of working, which is actually a really good number. My final thoughts about this Hoover are, if you need a vacuum for an apartment, small space, or a condo, I wouldn't be afraid to pick this up. There are definitely better options, I think, in the Hoover lineup, but having that swivel neck is a real bonus feature. It does save you quite a bit of time when you're vacuuming. And the weight is pretty light in your hand, so, again, I do like that. If you want the drawbacks of bagless, this is definitely not the worst bagless system I've seen. It's, it's a pretty good bagless system overall. Again, I don't personally see a reason for this over a bag, but a lot of people are going to want this. So if you go down to your local box store and you pick this up, uh, really no problems with that. It's easy enough to maintain. Hoover has a great warranty. So I think that's really the reason to buy this is if you're looking in the vacuum section at a box store or you're looking on Amazon, and I'll put links below to the channel if you want to help support this channel, if this video helped you. But this is just a great thing to pick up if you want that cheap bagless cleaner. And that's what this is. It doesn't pretend to be anything else. And I, I think it really is on par with other things in this segment. Hey, I just need to mention that Hoover sent this out for review. No money has exchanged hands, but they did send this one out to charge. As you can see, it really doesn't affect my opinion of the machine. It got a so-so review. Big thank you to Hoover for taking the risk and sending this to me. So thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Check out this other video here on the Hoover Tempo, which I would recommend over this. But again, availability is king, so uh, do what you will. Have yourself a wonderful day.